As we approach this week of prayer and fasting, we thought it would be helpful to remind ourselves why it's so crucial for us as a church. Let's look then at what prayer and fasting is, why it's important to us, and how we go about doing it. So what's prayer? Prayer is basically just talking to God. Prayer is a key part of our individual relationship with God, but it's also so important for us corporately as a church as well. Why is it important? Well, here are a few reasons. First of all, it expresses our dependence on God and it acknowledges that he's the head of the church universal and also Grace City Church specifically. Secondly, coming to wait on God together as a church, we can expect to enjoy his presence and for him to fill us and to refresh us. Also because the Bible tells us that our battle is not against flesh and blood. And so as we gather as God's army to pray, we can expect breakthrough and victory in various areas of church life and in various areas of individual life as well. And because the mission to go into all the world and to make disciples happens when we align ourselves with God's plans where he's the one directing our paths. And because he challenges us to ask him for things, he wants us to come in faith and to ask him for the miraculous. So that's what prayer is, and that's why it's important. But how do we go about doing that? Well, when the disciples observed Jesus' prayer life, and they saw the kind of intimacy that he had with God the Father, they said to him, hey, Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? And Jesus said this, he says, you come to God as your Father, a Father who knows you, a Father who loves you, a Father who enjoys spending time with you, He's a father who knows what you need even before you ask him. And he's a father who's not going to give you a snake when you ask for a fish. But he's not just any old kind of dad. He's our heavenly father, which doesn't mean he's far off. It means he's powerful, that he's strong, that he's mighty, that he's able to break into your circumstances and to act on our behalf. And Jesus also says that we come to hallow his name to adore him. We come to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And we come praying, knowing that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us, as it says in 1 John. And the amazing thing is this, is that as we come to pray together as a church, he reveals his will to us as he leads us by the Spirit and as he speaks to us prophetically through his people. And Jesus says that we're to express our dependence on God as our provider. We're to confess our weakness, but also recognize that he is our strength. And we're to recognize that we're in a battle, that Christ is victorious, that he's conquered, that we stand in his victory, and we're on the winning team. That, Jesus says, is how you're to pray. So what's fasting then? Well, very simply, fasting is not eating for a period of time. But it's more than a physical discipline. Biblical fasting is not eating, but with spiritual communication in mind. Biblical fasting always pairs fasting with praying, which means that you can pray without fasting, but you never fast without praying. And why is fasting still important for us? Well, here are a few reasons. See, fasting is an expression of our dependence and our wholeheartedness. When we set aside the appetites of the body to concentrate on prayer, we're demonstrating that we're serious about seeking God. As Andrew Murray said, fasting helps us to express and to deepen and to confirm the resolution that we are ready to sacrifice anything, to sacrifice ourselves to attain what we seek for the kingdom of God. You see, we're serious about extending God's kingdom, and that's why fasting is important. So how do we go about it? Well, there are very few rules in the Bible about how to fast. It's really between you and God. We see a few examples of fast in the Bible, though, that we can learn from. First of all, there's a simple fast, like is described in Leviticus 16, which is when people abstain from food or drink for a period of time, a short period of time, perhaps between sunrise and sunset. You can fast like that if you want for a short period of time. There's also a partial fast, which rather than abstaining from food altogether, it's restricting your diet. So Daniel and his mates fasted like this. They only ate vegetables and drank water for an extended period of time. You can fast like that if you want. And there's also a radical fast, which is when people went without food and drink, or sometimes just food for an extended period of time. Esther fasted like this. 
Ezra fasted like this. King David and Paul all fasted like this. However you may choose to fast, Jesus describes in Matthew 16 Christians fasting and yet going about their normal daily duties. They were still working, they were still studying, they were still involved in different parts of society. And in a purely worldly sense, the pangs of hunger biting act as a reminder for why we're fasting and why we're praying and turns our focus again to God. The most challenging thing about fasting is this, is that Jesus assumes that we will fast. He doesn't say if you fast, he says when you fast. And yet he leaves the choice of how we fast and for how long we fast and what we do while we're fasting completely up to us. He says that fasting should be done under an umbrella of grace, no legalism involved. So what will your response be? Will you rise to the challenge? Finally, you may be wondering why there are so meetings happening during that week of prayer and fasting. Well, practically speaking, the more meetings we have at different times of the day and different days of the week and in different locations, mean more opportunities for people to gather together corporately to pray. But not just that, when Jesus calls us to pray, he calls us to ask and keep asking, and to seek and keep seeking, and to knock and keep knocking. But even more than that, we want to allow God time to impact our lives, to speak to us, and for us to enjoy his presence together. So how will you respond? Will you rise to the challenge?